don't want what we know out there. How a person can go from really almost nothing to becoming a millionaire by owning rental properties. He would always buy these flip houses, and I just remember thinking, this guy is crazy. Why would he buy that house? In the past decade, there's been a huge surge in the peer-to-peer short-term rental market. Become an insider. So you have to know the rules before you get the game. Every second counts. So make every second count. Welcome to the Real Estate Jam. Whether you're just beginning or the best of the best, we're glad you're here. We will share successes, failures, and strategies for the action-taking real estate investor. And now to your hosts, JD and Melissa. Hi guys, welcome to the Real Estate Jam podcast. I'm JD. Back with me again is my wonderful co-host, Melissa. Hello, JD. Melissa, how are you? I'm super great. We are getting in the Christmas spirit for sure. <laughs> so yes. excited. If by Christmas spirit, you mean lots of buying, lots of wrapping, and uh, lots of fun. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so uh, what we wanted to tell you, talk to you guys about a little bit today uh, was our experience on uh, the TV show that we did called The Funding Face-Off. Um, for those of you that, that don't know, Melissa and I got the opportunity uh, to go out and pitch a couple of our deals. We, we flew out to Las Vegas and uh, went to a, a production company where they were filming this TV show. And I guess, Melissa, do you want to maybe tell them a little bit about what Funding Faceoff is or what it was what it was supposed to be and, and kind of the premise behind the show? Yes. So we got the opportunity. It was super awesome to um, go to a show. It was a new show that was allowing investors to bring um, bring deals to a um Panel of experts. Yeah, panel. I was looking for that word. Panel. Good job, Katie. Nice. A panel of experts with Kevin Harrington. Harrington, sorry, from well, Shark Tank. He, he's from Shark Tank, but he he originally got his kind of claim to fame was all the as seen on TV products, and then uh, he he helped start the Shark Tank. Uh, he, I don't think he does it anymore. I think he moved on to bigger and better things like uh, yes, funding right. funding Face Off. I did um, not know he did that. Things you saw on TV. Yeah, that's oh, wow. that's that's like his I uh, no idea. big thing. Anyway, so he was there for the first two episodes of taping, I think, to use him as like a springboard to get interest in the show and to get it off the ground. Um, and so JD and I had two deals that we were looking for funding. We were gonna could fund them ourselves, but we were thinking that would be great if we could get funding and just get experience and get exposure and, you know, see what that's like. Yeah. And, and I guess the whole uh, premise of the show is similar to Shark Tank that you have contestants or, or pitchers going out there presenting their deal. Um, I think on most episodes, there were three groups of people or three individuals pitching the deals you would go in one at a time face the five judges for for our deals kevin harrington was uh one of them and i don't i don't think he was on the the second deal that we we pitched um but you go in there and they have a ipad with all of your deal details pictures of the deal kind of the financials that you put together and, and a brief questionnaire that we had to fill out beforehand uh, and then they they take that, you pitch your deal, um, you know, hey, I got a, a four bedroom, two bath uh, property over here. It needs $200,000 worth of work. And we're asking for $400,000 cash um, to complete this project and flip it, sell it, turn it into a rental. Any, I mean, there was million dollar deals being pitched. And then I think the, the, the cheapest ones were, you know, $20,000 deals being pitched. Uh, kind of everything in between. So the three investors go out individually or the three teams go out individually, pitch the deal. Uh, and then after that, the they judge, beat you up. <laughs> yeah, they do beat you up. Mm -hmm. They say, well, you know, uh, I know rehab costs and your costs are way low or, um, hey, I think that you overpaid for this property, all kinds of feedback um part of it's dramatic uh i mean all the people on on the, the board the the judges 
uh, they were all super intelligent real estate investors and, and did have a lot of experience. I'm not sure uh, they had as much experience as they were presenting themselves as, but they were still fairly uh, experienced investors. Um, and, and then, you know, they, they discuss amongst themselves and uh, then all three of the, the presenters come back out. They immediately, um, they um, immediately get rid of one. Say, hey, like you're you're fired or your deal is dead is what they say. That person leaves the stage, and then that gives the opportunity for the two two teams or the two people remaining to present their offer to to the deal makers. So, uh, and and the the kind of unique thing about this is not only are you trying to pitch your deal to the to the um, deal makers. But you are also competing against, they call it the funding face-off. This is your face-off. You're facing off against this other investor who's bringing a deal, and you're both trying to get funded by the, the deal makers. And so, you know, if I started out at, hey, well, I'll take 7% interest only payments for a year and a half, um, and then he might come in and say, well, I'll do it for 6% and 20% equity in the project, go back and forth like that until somebody uh, on, on the deal makers side of uh, the, the show says, all right, you got a deal. And then that person um, receives the deal. The other um, person hangs their head in shame and walks away. Um, and uh, that's pretty much it. And then after, after the show, you have to present all the deal, all the facts, you have to bring them your contract. You have to, sh- you know, go through all of the like due diligence because they're not just going to sign it because I said I had the deal. They're actually going in and looking at it and then uh, they'll fund the deal if you get it. And we looked at it going into it. Like even if we made zero money on it, um, it was just about the experience and the exposure and meeting some other potential private money down the road. Um, So we were fine giving up everything and just walking away. Of course we didn't want to, but we talked about it and that's what we went into it just for that, right? Yeah, it was more about us trying to build relationships than it really was us trying to get the best deal, negotiate the best yeah. deal. We have private money lenders that that we could use that would probably give us better deal uh, than any of the deal makers would be willing to do. You know, people that we've worked with before, people that we've paid out before, that the terms would be more favorable uh, for for the situation, but uh, we we knew kind of a cost of doing business and and uh, working being able to work with some of these people if we got the chance. Now we aren't allowed to say whether we got funded or we didn't get funded, uh, but the show was supposed to air in October, and so we pushed it all out on our social media. Every all the contestants pushed it out on their social media. Uh, And so did the deal makers, but I guess generating enough interest at that point from, from all of the, the social media posts and stuff that were going out, uh, the, the show leaders were approached by two different major networks. I think uh, one was Netflix and one was like discovery or something like that. Um, And now they're in negotiations of selling the show to uh, one of those larger networks, as opposed to the bargain house network, which is, is where it was originally going to air and on Roku and Apple TV and stuff like that. They're trying to get it um, produced and, and pushed out to a larger stage. So everything as far as the release is kind of um, slowed down and and we don't know when it's going to happen. We know it's still going to release, but we're just not sure which platform it's going to be on. Uh, And so now we're kind of in a holding pattern waiting to see what they want to do. But, but, but we had another opportunity. So they came to us and asked if we would host a weekly show going over deals um, in, you know, in any different states, not just Florida where we're located. But, um, and so every week we tape a show reviewing properties that uh, other investors have under contract, whether they're good, what we like about them, what we don't. Um, and so that's been fantastic to do that. Yeah, that's on the Bargain House Network, which is, you, it's a online streaming, bargainhousenetwork.com, or you can pull up the app. It's easiest to watch it off the app. Uh, and, and the whole premise of that show is just uh, me and Melissa 
and uh, Dr. Adam, who's kind of the, the host, we go in and we review deals that have been put on this Bargain House Network. So the Bargain House Network is a, is really a, a way for investors to get their properties up and, and seen across the country. If you have uh, deals that are, are uh, some sort of value-add type deal, whether it's listed or not, as long as it's a, there's a value-add play of some sort, uh, you can you can post it on on this uh, bargain house network for free. Uh, you'll be assigned a pin code, and then anytime anybody's looking at it, either on the website or through one of the shows, they can find your your property with the pin code and submit offers to you. It's completely free for the investors right now. Um, but and- as well as listing the properties, if you're an investor or um, looking for properties, that's a great way to find them. You know, yeah, absolutely. Too. There's wholesalers that are posted in really good deals. Mm-hmm. We've reviewed a couple of them uh, that are really good, and you know, that's we're posting all of our deals on there now too. And we've gotten some interest. I don't think we've closed any with anyone off mm-hmm. there yet, but uh, it's only a matter of time. And I think it's a, a really good tool. Really cool. Uh, that if you're an investor just starting out, or or you're an investor who needs more properties, um, jump on there and and see. And as the as the bargain house network gains more in popularity, I think there's going to be a lot more uh, properties on there. But for right now, we're seeing quite a few, and and so a lot of them are uh, It's uh, the bargainhousenetwork.com. Yeah. So, um, well, that's pretty much it. Hey, if you guys. Um, want to see the show or find out more about it, you can, you can hit us up on our social media um, and, and we'll love to talk to you more about it. If you're interested in getting on the funding face off, I think they're taking applications for the next mm-hmm. season. Yeah. So you can, you can reach out to us and we'll get you connected there too. Check invest the with notes. JD is this Facebook. Yep. Invest with JD and you can uh, reach out to me there pretty much anytime. Thank you for listening to The Real Estate Jam. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. For more information, check out our website, therealestatejam.com, or find us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at The Real Estate Jam. If you have any questions, feel free to drop us an email at therealestatejam at gmail.com. See you next episode.